Hashtag Ask Goji Man, can you make a video on what impacts the carnivore diet has on your microbiome? Thanks so much for the question and I'm glad you asked because I'm just looking at my PhD proposal and think I will be investigating the diets and the microbiome and its impacts on health outcomes. So I'm super fascinated by this topic. And on that bombshell, roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Welcome back, it's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And next year I'll be studying for a PhD in nutritional science. I make vegan health and nutrition videos every single day unless I'm snowed with assignments, in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. Or alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. And on that note, to the question. So the human GI tract has a large surface area, so about 250 to 400 meters squared of surface area between your gut and all of the bacteria, pathogens, and food that you eat. And in that total surface area, there are a lot of bacteria that reside that help you do all manner of things from digesting your food, making your neurotransmitters, and also promoting a strong immune system. Now, I'm sure you will have heard this before, but there is up to 10 times more bacteria in your microbiome than cells in your body, so there is a lot. We know from lots of scientific research that the microbiome is pivotal for your long-term health, and if you have the wrong inflammatory types of bacterial strains in the gut, then you are very likely to experience gut issues, gut diseases such as colitis and Crohn's, and further down the line, cancer and heart disease to name a few. And we also know that there are in excess of a thousand different strains of bacteria in a healthy microbiome, and for most of these strains, their primary fuel source is fiber. Yes, certain strains will utilize fat and protein from your diet, but this is often not ideal for the reasons that I will discuss later in this video. So what happens in the gut then if you shift away from fiber and move to a carnivore type diet? Well, let's start with some of the well-known and established negative impacts that meat, dairy, and eggs can have on your microbiome. So number one, when you eat choline-rich foods, i.e. meat, dairy, and eggs, your gut flora will convert this into trimethylamine, which then gets converted into trimethylamine and oxide in the liver, which is a toxic substance in the body, with well-known and established links to heart disease, heart attacks, and also liver disease. Number two, a meat-only diet will cause inflammation in your intestines due to the increased number of pathobionts in your gut, and anyone on a carnivore diet can test this. Now, many carnivore dieters will say, well, my C-reactive protein numbers are low. So C-reactive proteins are inflammatory response markers. Now, the problem with C-reactive protein is that they will generally rise when disease has escalated. So C-reactive proteins therefore don't tell you if you have growing health problems. A much better way of measuring inflammation in the gut before you ever reach disease is to do a Lipocalin 2 test, which is an extremely sensitive stool biomarker of inflammation in your intestines. I challenge any carnivore dieter to take this test and I will even order it for them. Number three, eating a carnivore diet will cause a proliferation of certain strains of bad bacteria such as bilophilia. Now, when you eat lots of fiber, the good bacteria will ferment that fiber and then produce and excrete certain metabolites that keep the bad bacteria in check. And when you don't feed the good guys, the numbers reduce, and this allows the inflammatory strains such as bilophilia to grow at a rapid rate. And bilophilia and other similar strains are linked to many different gut diseases. Number four, the body produces less short-chain fatty acids on a carnivore diet. Now the main short chain fatty acids produced in the body are acetate, propionate and butyrate. And these short chain fatty acids are the main source of nutrition for your colon cells. And they also help with immunity and neurotransmitter production. And short chain fatty acids and the subsequent lactic acid produced by the fermentation of dietary fibers also lowers the pH and maintains gut homeostasis. So homeostasis simply means the good bacteria controlling your bad bacteria. So if you only eat meat, then the amount of good bacteria also reduce, and so does the subsequent amount of short chain fatty acids that your gut bacteria will produce. So all you need to remember is that less short chain fatty acids will have a direct knock on effect on immunity, neurotransmitter production, and also pH levels of your gut. Number five, carnivore diets lead to putrefaction of proteins in the colon, which increases your colorectal cancer risk. So for those on a standard Western type diet, we know that up to 12 grams of protein a day escapes digestion and then travels to the colon where it is fermented by gut bacteria. 
And worryingly, in terms of carnivore diets, we have no data yet as to ascertain how much protein is escaping digestion and being fermented by their gut bacteria. What we do know though is that negative byproducts such as amines and ammonia are produced when undigested protein is fermented in the colon. And this process of fermenting proteins in the colon is called putrefaction. So why is this a problem? Well, if you have undigested fiber hitting the colon, the bacteria will ferment and produce beneficial short chain fatty acids. Fermentation of undigested proteins is however associated with higher rates of colorectal cancer as the protein is putrefied lower down in the gut. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below. Alternatively, send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Yeah.